Hey everybody and welcome back. Hope your guys is to Thursday, not Tuesday. Thursday went pretty well. I got home pretty late today. Sorry, this video is up kind of late, but whatever. So I guess it looks like the Xbox One S has noticeably better graphics than the Xbox One for I guess some games. Now it's in comparison to the original Xbox One, obviously. The GPU clock speed has been boosted from 853 megahertz in the original Xbox to 914 megahertz on the Xbox One S. So in order for the hand to increase data flow, the S RAM or ES RAM has bandwidth in the Xbox One S, and the Xbox One S has also been increased. So I guess combining all these things, and then the output is 218 gigabytes per second. With the original Xbox One, it was only 204 gigabytes per second to produce graphics, I guess you know. And games that show the most improvement have either unlocked frame rate, so it's basically or and support dynamic resolution. Games with 30 frames per second will cap at a frame rate and it will also look better during segments that failed to reach the cap on the original Xbox One. So it looks like they had significant frame increases on some games as well. But I guess they chose a racing segment that takes place in a thunderstorm for looks like Project Cars. It is Project Cars indeed. I just looked at it again here quick. And it allowed them to measure the maximum benefit of the graphics improvements on the Xbox One S by placing heavy demands on the graphics engine, which I guess Performance averaged 7% better overall the entire segment with a maximum benefit of 5 frames per second for the Xbox One S. Switching to a third person view behind the wheel, car gave an 11% overall boost which maxed out to 9. So it is pretty much as you guys can see from the picture. It was 50, capped at 50 it looked like, and then it, on the Xbox One S it's at 59 frames per second. So it looks like there's quite a bit of difference here between the two. I mean, it's not noticeably different. Like, it's not like, oh, I need to go out and buy the Xbox One S right away. It's still better overall improvement. You can just tell which one looks better. I mean, just visually, it looks just a little bit better. Now, is it something I would say go out and buy? No. I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, go out and get this. Maybe for Project Scorpio, but not definitely not the Xbox One S. They have the power bricks inside the console. And I like how in yesterday's video I said I wasn't going to talk about the Xbox One S, but I guess here we are. The power bricks in the console. You got the high dynamic range, which will only support it if your TV supports it. So you got to check for that. And you got the Kinect thinger is gone. The USB port thinger is gone for the Kinect. Um, just the smaller console, like, yeah, that's all great and dandy. But, I mean, it's not going to benefit $400 purchase again. I mean, it only benefits people like everyone else is saying. It only benefits people that need the newest and greatest thing and they can't, have anything that's quote-unquote old so that's pretty much the only people this benefits or if you want a 4k player for blu-ray and stuff i mean other than that it's like honestly no who i don't know who would even buy this to be honest like whatever but i guess if you're on the fence of getting an xbox one you're like well the xbox one s just came out so i should just buy the one s then there you go but i mean if unless your tv meets the hdr requirements and the 4k requirements it's kind of a useless console you might as well just stick to the other xbox one but whatever I mean, the Xbox One is cool and all, but it's not anything that's for the average person. So the Xbox One launched yesterday, and I guess people have tore it apart and tearing the console apart and whatever. Or was it two days ago? I don't know. This article says yesterday, but whatever. And Austin Evans, who's on YouTube, I talk him. I watch his videos once in a while. I haven't really watched them lately. But he did a teardown of it, and he found, I guess, an Easter egg from... Uh, the Xbox, and it was a laser-etched illustration of the original hero of the Xbox One, Master Chief of Halo. And it was impressive because, it, I guess, it paid tribute to one of the most iconic characters of the console in an area where few, if any, will actually see its due to the location inside the case. Now, it's kind of weird how <laughs> they threw this into the Xbox One S. Is that Master Chief. I think nobody will ever see this because you pretty much have to take the console apart and plus, it's once you take it apart, I mean, obviously you avoid the warranty and all that good stuff. It's on, it looks like the backside of the optical drive. So, I mean, you have to just rip this thing apart and then you'd be like, oh, cool, Master Chief. And then whatever. It's kind of weird how they would put it on the inside of the console because, I mean, how many people are actually, I mean, I'm pretty sure they probably knew people on YouTube and stuff were going to tear this console apart. So maybe it was for that, just for like a surprise. But other than that, I mean, it would have been cool to see this on like the outside, just kind of etched in somewhere small. I don't know. It's it's a cool Easter egg, I guess. Possibly an Easter egg by Microsoft, but whatever. Moving on to the last piece of news today. So, this is produced by Polygon here. It says, No Man's Sky isn't 30 hours long, silly. Take a chill pill. And in this article, they talked about just 
pretty much everything you need to know. Like, wait for the reviews, and the guy did something unusual. And I guess he says... And it's just pretty much how it's not, like... Di- he just kind of broke the game, I guess, possibly. Like, trying to get to the center of the galaxy. So, I guess, in explanation, Damien, or whatever his name is, found a rare item that fetched an extraordinary price in the in-game economy. He essentially farmed that resource so he could sell it for a massive profit, and then he bought upgrades for his ship that allowed him to partake in what's called warp jumping, hurtling towards the center, skipping parts of the game that a typical person would like likely play through. And Damien characterizes his method in a shortcut rather than a cheap or exploit. He said the game clearly highlights this resource as an op- option, is that it's not something secret and he stumbled upon. And he insists that he did not play No Man's Sky with the sole intent of min-maxing his build so he could reach the center as fast as possible, saying, I actually intentionally took time out of my warp jumping over the course of going to the middle of the explore planets to break up the metomony of it. Metomony of it. Jeez, I can't even talk. So I, I... I don't know. But it says, like... and. They said they played No Man's Sky for a bit, and they don't know if the entire game is montaneous, but they feel confident that if you're playing in a way that leads you to stop and smell the roses, to do what the game seems to encourage is just break up, like, so you're not just trying to get to the sun of the galaxy and that's your only goal. They want you to explore other planets and other things that you can possibly find on that planet, and they kind of expect the typical player to do that. Then they kind of said just basically wait for the reviews to come out, don't. Just use this guy's opinion and run with it and accuse Sean Murray and whoever of making the game like this is wrong, this is not right. Kind of just wait for the reviews and see what you think, but I'm definitely buying I'm probably going to buy it for my PS4, but we'll have to wait and see. Because I'm already buying it from my PC on Steam. But they said No Man's Sky isn't 30 hours long. They said, it almost beside the point, but they feel like they have to say it for just putting on the record. It's not 30 hours long. And I guess if it were, it wouldn't even be that bad of a thing. They said... Basically, their analogy was he raced through the game and he was able to reach the Sunlight Galaxy in less than a day and a half. And that doesn't mean that Halo Games was lying about the length of No Man's Sky, but the length to this is freewheeling space exploration game. So, like like I said earlier, or yesterday's video, I think I said it, and even Monday's video, I mean, he, like, what you're going to want to do is explore that planet and then you're going to be like, do I want to leave this planet because I might miss something, or do I want to go explore this planet over here because it looks really cool and I think I could benefit from that. This guy just pretty much just pounded out and just raced towards the center of the galaxy as fast as he possibly could. He can deny it all he wants. I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened, I mean, from what he's explaining. But, I mean, they said they have that's pretty much, there's nothing to say on the 30 hours is a long time. But I guess we are playing Pokemon Go or Fallout 4, and they find themselves with less and less free time, and they don't want to spend in the video game, but... I guess they said they'll have to just take after his Damien's and speed through No Man's Sky anyway. Personally, I, I don't care if I see the center of the galaxy or not. I just want to play the game how I would play it and go from there. I mean, there's no point to rush through it and just ruin it for myself because, wow, I really know, I already know it's at the center of the galaxy and I didn't explore more than eight or nine planets. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to explore the game. If I don't reach it, that's fine. But if I do, great. I mean, I'm not going to, like, lose sleep over it if I don't ever reach it. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. I will talk to you guys again tomorrow. Have a good one.